Good evening, everyone. This is Dave Herman. Uh, I don't have the inset photo tonight. We're just going to work on the art. And this is the, uh, uh, another postcard I'm working on, 4 by 6 inches. As I work on all the different things in my life as an artist. So uh, this is December 3rd, 2017. And the first day I'm going to use my pair of dual monitors that are mounted on a dual monitor stand attached to a standing table, those power tables you see all over the internet. This is a uplift table with the uplift monitor stand and then a friend of mine donated yesterday two Dell 24 inch 205, no, 2405 PFW monitors I believe. So they're older but at the time they came out, they were ahead of their time. So these are 1980 by 1200 resolution, which should be pretty cool for us. And tonight I'm not in set, uh, so I don't have to worry about what I look like. And so you can see I started this. You've watched parts of it. Here's a, a figure with a huge hand rotated back. It's part biomechanical and organic. The chest is open at the moment. There's these legs in a crouching position. The back of the head is pushed away, and it's hollow in here, and you can see some hollow cavity. I never know how these things are going to end, but tonight we're going to work on the mask. So we're going to zoom in over here on Magnify, hit the Zoom In button, and click this. And then we're going to drag that into the middle of the screen, like that. You can see the white is my gesture drawing, and uh, you know I did a bunch of scrumbles. And then after all those scrumbles, I started to add color and this strange eye and this other eye, which is kind of glossy, see-through, kind of a frosted glass kind of a look. Same thing here, but that's kind of receded into here, and you can see some kind of like mm, staircasing, interacting, interesting effect going on here. So let's pick a color. We're going to use purple, and I'm going to pick a new layer. I have my clip file, but then I typically save these as JPEGs to post. But we're making a video right now, and we are two and a half minutes into it. So we're going to add some purple here, see? Just like that. Kind of interesting what's going on, right? And that's in the watercolor brush effect. So... Uh, I don't have any music playing. I'm just going to do some kind of strange work here because this layer is appearing under this layer. Now we want to move this on top of that layer. There we go. So this is another thing you can discover with layers. You know, if you drag that down uh, to what layer is this? So we just know 11. Okay. And just drop it in. Anything can happen, see, because it's under something else. Totally awesome for artists to play with these layers. Each one's like a piece of glass, so you shuffle them around like cards, and you get different effects. So it's a little inspiration for you, I hope. All right, so now we're painting above. And, oops, if I don't like something, I'll just edit and go back. And you can watch me work. Uh... I'm going to do some spontaneous stuff here. I have no idea where I'm going with this design. I'll pick this purple. It's kind of in a transparent mode. Uh, and, but we're in a watercolor brush, so that's why it looks like you're seeing the bristles. Because I want that effect, that's, that's you know, these strokes that aren't solid. Almost like a bunch of hairs on the brush, right? Right exactly what they are. So isn't that cool? That's like a watercolor brush and you can go over it and it doesn't run if you have it set up to be not runny. Okay? So that's what's kind of going on there. Now, we're going to remove some of that while I was talking. I don't want all that stuff. But I was trying to illustrate to you uh, different effects of that brush and what you're actually seeing me do as I'm drawing what is that brush they call the watercolor brush. 
so we have way too much garbage on here and that's good okay so now let's do some structure here I'm trying to uh, not quite sure where I'm going with this but see I just I just do it and see what I feel and the thing about digital is you do have to scale the size you do have to pay attention to your opacities and things like that when you're working so doing that and talking both are kind of interesting so this is almost like a matador's hat so now I'm gonna stop for a minute and I'm gonna go on another monitor and I'm gonna type in monitor uh, matador hat let me get over to my other screen for a minute and matador hat cap let's see what comes up okay excellent stuff so all I have to do is hit images on the screen you can't see and then I bring up some uh, matador caps so now I know what a matador cap looks like actually and very cool so now I'm going to give that kind of the matador cap look why I don't know I'll figure out an explanation for it later but uh, and let's see where our density is. is our brush size the amount of paint the density we don't want so much density so that's the, oh the color stretch yeah we don't want to go that far and we're not too big on the density we're going to lower that so we're going to come back uh, hopefully and I'm going to put this on another layer I haven't named these layers I'll play with them some other time about naming but so then I'm going to go here and make like the uh, oh, there's a little inset area so we're doing that right there and then uh, depending on the orientation of the head I might have it be over here like this like we're looking down into it and I'm going to go much lighter and I'm going to go airbrush because now I'm thinking differently And soft and then of course we're going to scale this and let's lighten up this area in here and since I can't see that uh, I'm going to go a little harsher on the hardness I'm going to go a little more density and let's try that again And again, we can't see it, but we should be in a lighter shade of that color. So this is kind of perplexing. Let's let's see what's going on. We've got this. We've got, oh, you know what? We're not in color. Sorry. See this little bar over here? That should be in color. So we've been laying down a black, but that doesn't it doesn't matter because it's a black hat. See, that's what's going on. So that might happen to you sometime. You're talking and you're not thinking about what you're doing. So. So I'm going to undo that, and then we're going to go in a lesser uh, density, now that we know what's going on, and lesser hardness, and go back to what I expected to be doing, right in here. There we go. And then, uh, so this hat's going to be kind of like a shade of purple, so I'm going to come over to my purple. And I'm going to drop it down here. And like I say, these are just suggestions of things I'm doing. Because I do lots of bizarre art. You know that. And this is uh, going up on the daily sketch. And typically because I'm working and I'm talking at the same time, there will be little errors and things that happen and occur. But the benefit of it is we solve it together and that's kind of a cool thing 
And now I'm doing a modification of that hat. It's not exactly the same <clears throat> as what you would see, but they're kind of like a Mickey Mouse hat, and I'm sure that's where the Mickey Mouse hat came from. But instead of ears, it just has little lower bumps. So, you know, nothing's new under the sun, they say, but people take and reappropriate or, uh, <laughs> you know, create something and they don't tell you the origin of the creation. But when you find things, sometimes you can bungle into what you think is the process, like we just did. So, okay, so now I've got this little depression in here. We'll develop that up. We've got this here. I'm going to have another little peak off of here, like the Matador hat, because it's going to be part of this cool um, Scaramouche or uh, Mardi Gras mask that you might wear to the Mardi Gras. And then this is a hat. And uh, there we go. So now I'm going to work my hat. You know, I never know, like I say, where I'm going with these things. But it's the fun of discovery and stuff that I just love um, doing things. You know, I just I'm gonna put a little edge in here of light kind of around it like that. And kind of tilt that towards the viewer a little more. It doesn't have to be in the center or anything like that. It could be tilted on the person's head. I'm not too worried about that part. Then I'll make it darker in the center. So I'm going to come in here. It's going to have like a, just a, maybe a little bit darker middle. Like that. And that's kind of a lifted up little bevel bump. And then I'll come back here and lighten up the edge as I'm working. And by the way, I'm standing. I have a, uh, a little angled top, top, tabletop stand that I rest my uh, Intuos Pro medium slate on. And then I have my monitor that I can now manipulate any way I want on these giant arms and even have the ability to rotate that to portrait or landscape, depending on what I want. And that's going to be very useful in the future, uh, depending on <laughs> what I plan on doing in any given day. Okay. Now, if I wanted texture in this, for instance, and we're still developed the hat, but this is doesn't have to be like right now. I can go to uh, tone scraping, running sprays, droplets. I kind of like the tone scraping. So we're going to go to tone scraping. We're going to pick a lighter tone and we're going to scrape that hat like it was felt little bumps. Let's see what we get. See that? Now that's too bright and too many and too big. So I undo those. But there's the option. And so what do we do? We go down to the brush. We make that size smaller. Okay. We go down to the opacity because 100%, we don't want it solid like that. We have uh, different modes. We can select like all the things you see in Photoshop. But right now we're just going to use normal. Uh, I don't want it to be a very harsh particle size. You can change the particle size, see? Right there. All right, so now let me adjust my brush and put the texture back into this. And I don't want it to be so bright white. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see what we get. So now uh, it's adding a texture. And the dots are, you get the fuzzy feel, but the dots are too small. So when our particle, we're going to double that, maybe take it up to seven or something, shoot five times. Okay, that's a little too big, so we'll edit, undo, and we'll take that back down, maybe two, two. And yeah, see, 
Look at that. We just got felt. Just like that. So to have more contrast with that, we're going to undo those. Because I'm just experimenting as I go. I'm going to make the center of that hat just a little bit darker. <clears throat> and I'm going to do that first. And I'm going to do that with the soft brush again. So I'm going to come in here and just add a little bit of a darker tone. Still wanted highlight, so even a little bit more dark. Let's do that. Okay, like that. <clears throat> and then we'll put that texture in, and then we'll lighten the edge. So you see how that works? So now we're going to go back to tone scraping and pick a lighter variation. And we're going to let the sun hit, I mean, the light hit that. See, I got the texture top just like that. Boom. Pretty cool. And I could sharpen that later in Photoshop or here or whatever. Now I want to put a little edge of light, but I want that tone in it because that makes it look like the light's falling on the felt. So I'll come around the edge with that. Just kind of going over it. See, that way your light isn't just falling harshly on something. It keeps the texture in. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right. Now let's go back to a dark shade of purple and make some felt around there into this hat. So we're coming around like this on our light surface that we created. And we can bring it in, crop it close to whatever we want across here. And fine tune that later, but watch. Now we take the dark particle and we come across here. And look at that kind of a cool texture that you get, right? And if I want to raise that, run it along the side of this, that's even cooler. And I could go even darker as I'm using this to shade. So if I want that stipple effects, like it's a felt, I've created a brush that you just watched me create that lets me paint with that texture. And then depending on the colors, <clears throat> you know, you get your object the way you want. So that's what we're doing. And, you know, you can experiment dark over light, light over dark, but uh, you don't sit there and stipple this whole thing. You'd go bananas. And, uh, you know, I could do this off camera and you would say, how the heck did he do something like that? But this is part of tonight's little uh, session. Again, I'm uh, just a, a novice. I'm showing you how I'm investigating these digital programs for the last five years to um, reproduce things I would do traditionally in the real world with brushes and, and uh, cutting the ends off and stippling it down and all that stuff. I'm trying to find always the tools digitally. And now I kind of understand how you build a brush. See, somebody would say, well, you can buy my stipple brush set or you know, this, that, and the other thing you need. <clears throat> it's all in there. That's what they're creating to sell you. So be your own master and uh, learn how to create these things is my suggestion, just a suggestion, so you don't have to buy as much stuff. And you start to think differently how you look at the world. You say, well, I'm looking at that, and I bet I could... I bet I could make the texture of that grapefruit uh, as a brush the way somebody, you know, I would paint with a sponge, let's say, or I would take a paper clip and I would take a toothbrush and put paint on it. And then I would take that paper clip and drag it on the top of my toothbrush and fling little specks at the canvas or board or, uh, you know, cardboard I was painting on. 
sometimes that cold press board, you know, 100 pound, 100 weight cold press like we did uh, as traditional guys years ago. But now you can paint exactly like you do in the real world, but you must figure out how to make that brush and that tool uh, digitally. And that's now become interesting to me because, uh, see, as I shape this felt, uh, you're watching. And then, you know, your, your mind starts to develop. It says, well, I'd like a highlight on this edge. Well, okay, you've got the brush figured out. Go back and get a lighter paint and just, you know, come around that edge like light was falling on it. And if you don't see enough contrast, then, then uh, add a little opacity. And then those little tiny bumps will show up, you know? And if, if that's a, uh, the wrong texture for you or something like that, see how I'm working that? That's kind of cool. So I can go even brighter, I tell myself. I like the size of the texture. And look at that. So now I've lit up the edge of the felt like lights falling on it. And I'm mixing darks and lights. This kind of looks raised. This can be pressed in. You know, you have all these different surfaces and tones, and you start to develop an object. And it's, it's very much fun. It's very cool to do this. And you can make things very, very, very believable. Depending on how much time you want to put into it and how much detail and how far you want to take it. Uh, do you want it photorealistic or do you want to suggest it? You know, um, a lot of times I just suggest stuff, but they still look super cool. Now, don't forget, we're in a giant magnification. When I show you this on the actual size of the screen, then it's going to make a lot of sense. But what, because I magnify them way up, I'm able to get this incredible detail, I feel, that I want. So let's take a minute and save this. We're going to File, Save As. And I can see here that my new start, frame 6, I change to 7 clip. Clip file is all your layers, uh, you know, JPEG or a ping or any of those things is without the layers. So let's do seven. Perfect. It'll save it in the appropriate folder I have right there. And uh, save. Now you'll see a little thing come up, hourglass, and it's saving and it's done. Okay. So now let's uh, view this print size. See that? Now, look at the detail. This is amazing, right? Like, I got every, all kinds of little cool stuff going on in there. It's tiny, but it's because I worked real large and took it down, and I'm thinking about how I'm going to light this up. The light's coming from the left side here, and I want texture and all that. So there you go. That's looking pretty cool. We're going to do a 30-minute video here. I'm at 27 minutes into it. And so what I do now is I can go back and magnify, zoom in, just uh, hit the middle of the area you're trying to zoom or drag, press and drag. And if it's not exactly in the center of the screen or where you want it, you know, you just change to hand and pull it around like that. So you're just moving your piece of paper on a table as, as it were. Okay. So, awesome. You've watched me do this from scratch. Now, I, I'm thinking of a chin strap might be pretty cool here. And I'll come back and play with these later when I have relationships established from one thing to another. I think in a brown chin strap. So, I'm going to get myself some type of a leather-looking kind of brown here. And I'm going to make a new layer for the chin strap. And remember when you have your layers to double check and see if your layer shows up 
at the top because sometimes it will just show up here for some reason in the middle and then you're painting between layers and you're going to be unhappy uh, unless that's your intention so just be conscious of where your layer is all right so now we've got this texture thing that we've got going pretty good when you first throw it down like this if you see black like we did we're going to edit and undo it's because when you brought up the layer or just like I did I brought up my layer I didn't go over here and select color now it will show my pigment properly so if I come down with the brown here and this is a dark edge of something there it is and then if I want that lighter in that kind of a value before I throw you know oranges and yellows and things in them to make them cool right now we're just thinking out this the beginning of this cap so there's my textured chin strap so to speak under this mask and uh, you know it's our rainy season here it's fall so sniffles and sneezing and stuff like that's pretty common at this time of year if you hear me doing that all right so now there's a complementary color thing happening down here and that shows me where that was and I might try that in here in between and if I wanted it darker of course then I change my opacity towards the hundred percent which is more color and you get something like that you know and then you're in the tone scraping and if you wanted it to have the leather to have texture in that tone you can go darker see and just kind of do this we're building uh, our tone and our structure in this object that I'm calling a leather strap and if I wanted buttons on there or something I could do little gold buttons you know so there's that now let's do some gold buttons so I'm gonna do that with a uh, um, a soft brush so there's none of these uh, textures and I'm gonna go into like a little goldish color and when I actually make gold, I add greens, and I add yellows, and I add browns. But right now, I'm just starting to think this out. Because I'm not in a hurry when I do these now. Mind you, I don't make any dough off of this, but... <laughs> I have been trying to do my... Uh, uh, what do you call them? Mouse pads. And I did a set of coasters, and they're for sale. And you can see them on my uh, Facebook page for that stuff which is David and then quotation mark D-O-Z quotation mark Herman David does Herman on Facebook so I'll go check that out if you want a little plug for myself and now I've got these little brass things hanging here and if I want to get some highlight in there you know uh, change the tone to the brighter go down smaller shine a little light on there keeping these spherical like and then I would I go way up to here for uh, even brighter and you can see down here whichever one of these squares has that blue around it that's what's active so there we go little one there little there and this is the lights coming this way they're getting bigger towards the viewer and they might even be in a progressive size on the object itself okay so let's do that and now if I want those to cast a shadow um, let's go back into the brown whenever you pick a color this is 100% gradating diagonally to zero and the black is 100% gradating to zero going the opposite way this is your 50-50 of everything cutting through diagonal and the values are 0 to 100 of 50-50 in the middle and so you start thinking about all this stuff okay so you get a tone you can see it in that square it is like a nice dark brown I might want that on the high part 
like that, see? And a little bit here. I'm leaving these, uh, like I can add uh, a wrinkle into there right now, almost a solid, like that. And make this brush smaller and get this done. And then we'll call this, uh, this is a, a, a session. So, okay, thank you. Ciao. Let me uh, stop this video.